Welcome to Music She Missed, the podcast where I try to get my best friend cut up in some of the most popular songs and artists that impact our lives. I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I've missed all the music. Hey, Rachel. So we're here for another episode of Music She Missed. Yes, we are. I'm excited to be here. Are you, though? You don't know oh, what's in no. store. Are you giving me, like, a forewarning that it's going to be one of those weeks? No, I'm just messing with you. Oh, gosh, Um, you know how to mess with me. (laughs) So, um, obviously, you don't know who this week's artist is. I don't. Every week is a surprise. It is. It is a true surprise. This isn't, like, a little game. Which is really weird because I'm not a fan of surprises. I don't like surprise birthday parties. I don't like surprise gifts. I don't like surprises. So I'm really surprised that I'm okay with you giving me surprises. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, unfortunately, this question has nothing to do with surprises, because that would have been a great, like, speaking Segway. of surprises, <laughs> but nope. So um, <laughs> my question for you this week is if when you were a kid, because I know you have a kindergarten yes. age daughter. When you were that age, were you ever afraid of monsters? <laughs> Yes. Really? Monsters, but also dressed up characters, like at Disney World. So just like your daughter? Yes. Okay. Like, I think it was until I was in middle school I could go to Disney World and not be afraid while standing next to Minnie Mouse. So were you worried that, like, Minnie Mouse was hiding under your bed? No, it was just once I saw them. Like, I remember being in elementary, a very similar age of where my daughter is right now, and my parents just really wanted a picture of us sitting on the Easter Bunny's lap. And mm. it was in a mall. And yeah, but mall Easter Bunnies are... They are creepy. Creepy anyway. But, like, I had to sit on the second floor balcony, stand mm. there next to my dad, and he's, like, watching, you know, my brothers and my sister, you know, with my mom sitting on the Easter Bunny's lap. And, and he's like, like, Rachel, do you notice that you're the only one here <laughs> out of the kids that can't... Mm get into the picture I'm just like dad I just can't do it <laughs> so when you when um when you were a kid or even now do you get scared if you like stick your foot out from underneath the uh the sheets no no oh, okay. not that stuff so like you've grown. I have grown um I think a few years ago I was cleaning underneath the um what do you call it um the bed and I was just, you know, cleaning, it was midday, whatever, yeah. and then I felt something touch my hand. <gasps> it jumped out. I was screaming. I was like, oh my gosh, what was it? And then I realized, oh, that was my other hand. <laughs> 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 yeah. But I don't have those things happen very often. Um, but yeah, that was just a few years ago. What does this have to do with this artist this week? Well, the fans of <sighs> this artist are known as little monsters little monsters Mm -hmm. little monsters does that sound familiar at all no good then are you ready for the big reveal yeah let's do a drum roll okay here Here we we go go. it's lady gaga i think i know one song of hers and isn't she the one that has like the weird outfits. She does have very weird outfits. Uh, 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 uh. Is yeah, that her? It is. Okay. Yeah, I know what song you're doing there. Oh, that is a song. Yeah. Okay, I just thought it was just how she talked. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> okay, okay, am I? Okay. So, um, so you are aware that Lady Gaga is a famous musician. Yeah, and she has a Netflix show, doesn't she? She has a Netflix semi-autobiographical special. Have you seen it? I have not. I haven't I seen it either, will but I saw it like we record the second half of this. Okay, I just <laughs> saw it on Netflix like that. You know, like oh, you should watch this, and, hmm. and so that part I know about her. Um, she performed in the Super Bowl, the most recent Super Bowl. Oh, I don't remember that part. Um, <laughs> That's the part of the. Do you watch the Super Bowl? Did I watch this past year? Clearly not. I don't. Then I don't you would know. know who Lady Gaga is. No, I'm confusing her with the opening Olympics, and I don't think she would open the Olympics. No. Okay, and then um, obviously she's more modern, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Um, and she's alive if she. She is. Okay. Well. 
So you know, you, so you know a little bit. Let me throw some songs at you. And okay. And you can tell me if they sound familiar. Just Dance. Just Dance. Da, da, da. Yeah. Is that her? That's her. Do you got it. That. Okay. Poker Face. That's her. Yes. Maybe I know more. Yeah. Bad Romance, which is the one you were humming before. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. Yeah. Uh, gosh, there's like a million. Alejandro? Pass. Pass. Uh, Born This Way? Pass. The Edge of Glory? Pass. Do What You Want? Pass. Applause? Pass. Okay, so it sounds like you know all the ones from like 2010. And then after that, your knowledge of her kind of drops significantly. Well, the thing is, in 2010, um, that was the year before I um, became a stay-at-home mom for my little girl. Oh. And so I was driving to and from work. Um, I was a stockbroker at the time. Oh, yes. And so my commute was like about an hour. But it was very much like until the very last year before I retired to become a stay-at-home mom that I started sort of listening to the radio, but not really. Well, if so you I were listening that to the radio in 2010, then you definitely heard a bunch of Lady Gaga because she kind of, you couldn't really avoid it. Isn't her music like played at July 4th concerts? Probably. Does she have like some patriotic song? She has an amazing voice. It wouldn't surprise me if she has sung the Star Spangled Banner at some point okay. at some event. I don't know specifically. Well, not specifically that. I was just remembering um, a family outing of just, you know, going to July 4th concerts and hearing music, and hmm. I just didn't know if maybe Lady Gaga's music would have been then. Okay. Well, maybe I will know a little bit this week, and maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> we will see. Um, so, so based on the song titles I read you and – you know, what you've heard about in the news or whatever, on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate your current familiarity with Lady Gaga? Mm, I would say 2, 3. I That sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a Lady Gaga playlist for you that's about an hour long. Cool. And I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to have fun okay. listening to it. And so just listen to it. Is it something it. that my daughter can listen to? Unfortunately, there are a couple of explicit songs. Okay. Most of them are probably fine, but some of the content and some of the lyrics you may not want your kindergartner listening to. Okay. I don't think anything in it is, like, inherently bad. Okay. But it, there are some explicit songs. Okay. So listen to it every day for a week, and then we'll come back together, talk. You'll get all of your questions answered, and mm. you can rate there we go. Sounds like a plan. Uh, audience, uh, we would love for you to check out our Lady Gaga playlist by going to Spotify and um, searching for Spotify colon user colon music she missed. That way you can hear this playlist and hear what Rachel's listening to. Join me. Sounds yep. good. All right. Uh, audience, we'll be back with you in just a moment. And Rachel, see you next week. Sounds great. Welcome back. Rachel, you spent the last week listening to Lady Gaga, the mommy monster. Yes, I did. What did you think? Um, She kind of reminded me a little bit of, well, not a little, maybe a lot of Madonna. That is a very astute observation. And so for that reason, I was like, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this week. But I kept because listening. you didn't like Madonna. No, I didn't. Right. I didn't prefer her sexuality and the, her just her approach of the music and how she presented it. Okay. Um, but the weird part is, I liked Lady Gaga, but I didn't like Madonna. But I felt that they were both very sexual in their lyrics and and just how they sure. approached things. But the way Lady Gaga approached it, I liked it a little bit better. And so I kept digging into figuring out why did I like it better. Well, maybe we will figure that out. I think we will. <laughs> as we talk about it. Um, so let's start by talking a little bit about um, her history, who Lady Gaga is. Rachel, let's start by talking a little bit about her history, her background. Yes. I'm kind of curious. So there's a few things that I was really especially 
I'm curious, would you consider Lady Gaga and her background and how she wanted to portray herself, who she wanted to be on stage, would mm-hmm. you consider her more of as a pop singer mm-hmm. or as a rock and roll singer? Definitely not rock and roll. We would go pop for sure. Like, okay. if you were going to pick a genre, I'd put her there. You could also, like, specifically categorize, especially the earlier stuff, as dance, right? Really? There's a difference between dance and pop. Yeah. I mean, one is kind of more popular just, like, for radio, and then there's kind of more oh. of, like, a dance, like, a club. Like, this is music for dancing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. so there's that. But she draws influence from a lot of different places. She does. She grew up listening to music like glam rock, for example, like David Bowie or Freddie Mercury of Queen. Those are Oh, big, I like both of them. Yeah, those are big influences in her music. Um, but everything from like she listened to Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden. She listened to the Beatles. I don't know who Iron Maiden is. You don't yet. So before we go too much into her history and too much into her influences, is her legal name Lady Gaga? Her mom not. did not <laughs> lip name her. Well, no, I do know someone whose name is Guy, and it's a guy. Yeah, but that's like an actual name. But there are, I'm. That's like a French There's name. Lady and the yeah. Tramp. There's, you know, but that's just a dog, of course. But <laughs> they did name her Lady, so she could have been named Lady and her last name Gaga. Yeah, that would be interesting, but it's not true. Okay, what's her name? So she was born into an Italian family, and her name is Stephanie Germanata. Is, so the Gaga part is from the G in her last name? Actually, the Gaga part comes from a Queen song called Radio Gaga. And so really? she took that little thing and Lady Gaga was born. So, so it's is, like her stage name, but it comes from Queen. So my question is, did Queen name her or did she no, name her own no. self? No, it's uh, like... A name that kind of, like, grew around her, I guess, as she was starting to perform more and, like, be in the scene. Okay. I don't know so, if she, like... So that's, like, like, when you and I were first friends, you would go by Allie, and then sometimes Allison, you just tell me to call you Allie. Yeah. So it's just like that? Exactly like that, except I didn't get Allie from a Queen album. No, you did not. <laughs> you just got it from Allie from Allison. <laughs> right, yeah. So it's slightly different. Okay. Um, so she started music really early. She started playing piano at age four. Wow. She was performing open mics at age 14. Wow. And she did um, go to like a prestigious New York like music school. Okay. But I am she... not surprised by that because yes. one of my questions that I wanted to ask you because I was thinking throughout the week mm-hmm. was just her formal training. Mm-hmm. She has got to have formal training specifically yes. in opera. It, I didn't find anything specifically about opera, but she does huh. have, like, formal musical musical training. And um, I read on Rolling Stone's website that her vocal coach um, was also Christina Aguilera's vocal coach. Huh. So... She's that genie in the body, bottle lady, right? That is correct. Okay. So, uh, but she, so she went to music school, but sophomore I... year... She dropped out to just pursue the high music school? career. No, college. College. Music okay. school. Okay. Well, yeah. there are some high schoolers that are in music yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she did a lot of, like, underground kind of electronic dance stuff. I she could see that. She did some, like, neo-burlesque performances. Okay, I could see that, too. <laughs> yeah, she did all <laughs> different kinds of things. And it wasn't until 2008... That her first um, album was released called The Fame. And it was re-released the next year with additional songs, The Fame Monster. And that's the first, like, big album where most of the songs on your playlist come from because it had so many hits. Hmm. Who did she um, release with? Recording company. So she's actually had a few different labels. She was with... um, Def Jam briefly. Okay. Later on, um, Akon okay. heard her and had him, um, and he had her sign with his label called Con Live. And there's been a few different like producers and labels that she's worked with over the years. So do you think those producers or any producer or any recording label when it comes to any of the artists is really kind of influence how big those albums become? 
Yeah, I mean, definitely getting signed with a big name is going to help. To help. But Lady Gaga does, like, write her own music. She does. Yeah, so her talent, it was, I feel did like... Did Madonna write her own music? Not that I, I... I think she did some. I think she does a lot of co-writing. So Lady Gaga is just naturally the sexual? <laughs> she likes to Because that joystick boundaries. kind of song, that Joystick? Just, yeah. Disco she, stick. Joystick, whatever. <laughs> no, disco stick. So, um, so you're talking, you're talking about Madonna... And it's it's interesting you keep bringing her up. So we talked about in the Madonna episode last season that Madonna kind of started this for women in pop music. Mm. This sexual pushing boundaries. She thing. pushed the boundaries. Right. And so Lady Gaga's kind of is one of the legacies, right? Uh -huh. And they have an interesting relationship. There's some kind of like... So they're friends. Ish. There's like a pseudo feud. Like they kind of are like, really? I really respect her, but you know, I do write my own music. Like it's kind of... In fact, in The Lady, I did watch the documentary that's on Netflix. That I haven't I've... gotten around to that. That's cool. Yeah. And there's like a section where Lady Gaga's saying, you know, if Madonna wants to say bad stuff about me. Why should she just say it to my face instead of, like, on TV? Like, wow. it's, it's a little bit passive-aggressive. Not um, a little. I would say that's a lot. <laughs> but at the same time, they also have, you know, collaborated. And there's a lot of respect okay. because they're in a small club, you know. They're in the, like, giant female diva pop star club. club. Um, I would say Beyonce's in that club. Beyonce could be in that club. Katy Perry could be in that club. Christina, I mean, Britney Spears. I mean, there's lots of women that could be in that, that are like Madonna's yeah. legacy, basically. Madonna's monsters. I mean, <laughs> sure. Lady Gaga's monsters. <laughs> sure, sure. So, um, so anyway, yeah, there's, actually, there's a lot of similarities. In fact, um, Lady Gaga's song, Born This Way, some mm, critics... Didn't like that one. But go ahead. And, that, and that's okay. But some critics said that it was basically a, a ripoff of a Madonna song called Express Yourself. Did I so, listen to that one? I don't think that was on your playlist. Okay. Um, but similar themes, similar sound. So some people think like, oh, you know, there's a little bit of oh, Lady Gaga's just like copying. But there are some big differences. I mean, just... Oh, yeah. I think one of the big differences that I kind of would veer more closer to liking, liking Lady Gaga more than mm -hmm. Madonna was that mm -hmm. there was that pop electronic sound and that more European dance club sound where, okay. where you know, it reminded me back when I lived in Europe. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also 40 years, 30, 40 years yeah, apart. That's so, true. you know, keep that in mind. Madonna was also dance pop. I mean, it's, this, it's just in the 80s, right? So very different and their sound, both of the women, their sounds evolve, have evolved. Mm -hmm. So Lady Gaga's had five albums. And in her first couple albums, she was really avant-garde out there. I mean, mm. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of Lady Gaga and her, the outfit she used to wear. She wore, like, a meat dress. Yeah, I, I saw something about that, like, on Pinterest. Yeah, she would wear, like... Like, clothing uh, just, that, like, you would, couldn't see her face, and she'd wear, like, giant wigs. She met President Obama wearing 16-inch high heels or something. 16-inch? <laughs> she's got to kill her toes. Like, so, kill her toes. Like, her toes must not be existent. But now, she's kind of doing the this kind of, like, reduce, like, this is who I am, much more minimalist. I'm just wearing black. Like, just simple, kind of new decade, new, more mature. So... Both women mm. grew, changed their image, changed their music style at, at, as things evolved to stay relevant, to stay interesting, to keep pushing the bounds of music. So watching the documentary, if you get a chance, it's really yeah. interesting to see how she's like shifted that. Mm -hmm. But it also shows a lot of her personality. Mm. So you get to see that she struggles with chronic pain. Oh. And a lot of the documentary is Would it be like, that 16-inch heels that she wore? No, no, no. It's not that. I mean, she's, like, broken her hip, and she oh, has, gosh. Um, like, fibromyalgia, I think. So, Ooh. yeah, so she has these problems, but she's, like, in the doctor's office with a documentary camera in there 
watching her like album sales and like making jokes. So she's got this really fun sense of humor That's that you get cute. to see. And um, you also get to see how she really interacts with her fans, how she loves them, how she's really very like motivated by pleasing her fans. That's like a big theme throughout the show. And, you know, so she's kind of, you know, for a while, it was kind of like, is Lady Gaga over? But she's coming back in, the, in 2016, the album Joanne was released, a very different direction musically. Um, on your playlist, those songs from that album are just Perfect Illusion and Million Reasons. Ooh, I liked Million Reasons. Yeah, I also sent you the track Joanne, which is about her um, aunt who passed away. But definitely goes in a in a different direction. And she's still doing giant things. I mean, she did the Super Bowl. And very recently, as of this recording, she just did a performance for the Hurricane Relief Fundraiser that all five former living presidents wow. was at. So she's had, for only being around for about 10 years-ish, not quite, right? In the, she's like, been very influential. She's been very influential. A lot of records, a lot of Grammys, a lot of How does she stuff. have a personal life? But I guess this is her personal life. It is. And one of the things that's sad in the documentary is seeing, like, she talks about how, you know, oh, this album got big, but then I lost this boyfriend. And she was even engaged once, and she's like, and then this album went big, and then I lost him. So there is this kind of, like, roller coaster of fame and personal life that's really difficult wow. to manage. And, you know, she's she's 31. and Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the things that maybe we don't want to be famous out of this podcast. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I don't so, want this podcast to be so popular <laughs> that it causes my personal life to be affected, to be destroyed. <laughs> so I have one last question, though. Don't uh, tell your friends about this podcast. No, Go ahead. tell them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, her ability to do piano mm -hmm. was she also violin? I don't like. I don't violin. know if that was that strings or what was that. She does play a lot of like stringed type instruments, okay. guitar and like synthesizers keyboards i think she might play guitar also a lot of different musical she's very she talented has. and i also showed you this you know obviously it's not on the playlist but i showed you her performance like the <gasps> julie andrews trivia. the sound of music stuff yeah. yes you sent me that link right. that was gorgeous i wanted you to see her using her voice in different ways and um just her natural performance abilities yeah, she's very talented. Do you have other questions for me? I think that's it, but I do want to talk a little bit about what I like and disliked. Um, well, and from, like which songs from the yeah, list? Yeah, from the list. All right. Well, let's start with the ones that you didn't like. Okay. Because I think that that's more fun. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> Some of the songs I didn't like was Judas mm -hmm. and Born This Way, mm -hmm. but just the lyrics of Judas and the sense of how she was falling in love with this Judas kind of a person. Okay. And it just, it was like you liking something that you know you're not supposed to like. Yeah. And yeah, I didn't like the song, but there was part of me that did like the song. I don't know how to explain it. So, so uh, I didn't like the song, but I liked the song, but I didn't like the song. Do you not like the song because of the meaning that you think the lyrics no. have? No. I'm just such a rule follower. And okay. so are you, too. Where yeah. we are very big rule followers in the sense that, wait, we're not supposed to break the rules. But she f created this kind of just this lyrical song to be like, yes, there's joy in breaking the rules. Well, I don't know if it's if it's quite joy. So I have a quote here from her. That she said, for, so for her, the song Judas is about washing the feet of both good and evil and understanding and forgiving the demons from your past in mm. order to move into the greatness of your future. Because she does say in the song, like, Jesus is her virtue, right? Mm -hmm. So she's not saying, she's not like, I don't think, reveling. I think she's recognizing what we all have, which is the propensity to dwell in the past or to dwell in darkness but recognizing that's not good for us mm. and that d does that yeah make and sense? i think that's why i like the song yeah of what she was trying to say in that um 
And so I like this song, but I didn't like the song, but I like the song. So I don't even know if I still <laughs> want to place it in the dislike pile. Interesting. So, yes. Yeah. She so, said. Yeah. She also said that she really likes aggressive metaphors. Mm -hmm. so, it was aggressive. <laughs> so, Very aggressive. Yeah. So I was wondering if you were going to like that song or not. And I think it's interesting that you're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure merely because. It's not my favorite just because I don't like the tune quite yeah. so much. Yeah. But I think the lyrics of that song are very interesting. Yeah. So let's talk about the ones then that you really liked. Yeah. So honestly, when I first listened to Million Reasons, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And mm. then it was like a slow but definitive and very defining to me falling in love with this song. And I just really liked it by the end of the time. And like, I don't know why I like it. I had the exact same. Really? That That's yes. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like that. I think that um, the album Joanne is, she wrote it to try to connect with her fans in a new way. Yeah. And write songs like, because the song Million Reasons is. It feels like I'm being one with her. Wow, that's really like, profound. It is. Like, where the other songs, where I'm not saying the popsness and the dancing Those are is fun. not fun, yeah. but where there's this oneness where I felt like it was just this intimacy as I was mm -hmm. listening to her mm -hmm. and kind of getting to know her in such a way that was just, there's purity in it. And that's her intention. So that I think it shows something about her yeah. as an artist, but she was writing those songs to connect to mm -hmm. write a song that people can relate to can apply it to them to themselves mm -hmm. um, and that song particularly is interesting because it's about loving somebody who hurts you mm -hmm. which we all have yeah. had those experiences you know so I think that's neat that that's the song you kind of grasped onto what was another one that you really enjoyed I had a lot of fun with the dance songs. I'm just going to be honest. Dance like, songs. just oh, okay. just dance, poker face, bad romance, telephone, Alejandro, paparazzi, <laughs> love game. Just, yeah, pretty much all the fame monsters. So, it was kind of funny. I have a little girl. She's in kindergarten. Right. And she's seen this movie over the summer with her friends. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it's on Netflix, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's Sing. Yeah, I watched that movie. <laughs> and it has this... Lady Gaga song, Bad Romance. And so I hear her, and we're like just doing errands. And, and she's, she's going, Gaga. Yeah, uh, uh, da, 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 da. I was like, wait a second. I'm on Lady Gaga this week. What do you know about Lady Gaga? She's like, oh, Mom, everyone knows Lady Gaga. And I was like, what? Except you. <laughs> Except me. That's too funny. Though I have to agree, there's a lot of songs in that movie. Yeah. As a kid's movie that I'm like, I wouldn't let my kid listen to that song. But I think so. they edit out or, well, yeah, they, and yeah. they kind of like change it a little bit. Yeah. But I think it's really cute. My favorite one is the big elephant. <laughs> she has she a beautiful, good. beautiful voice. But yeah, I actually had a lot of fun this week. The dance part was fun. Mm -hmm. um, the pogo st stick part was fun. Disco stick. Whatever. <laughs> it just sounds pogo that, stick. That little clip is so catchy. <laughs> This beat is sick. Yeah. I want to take a take jump. Take a ride. Jump. No, ride. <laughs> jump on your pogo stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like the Alejandro one. And just how she just rolls her R's. It just mm -hmm. makes me want to be like. <sighs> she does have um, actually a lot of songs that have bits that are in French and Spanish and German. Yeah. And she is very popular in Europe. worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell. So she's popular around the world. We've talked a little bit about her history, talked about what she liked, what she didn't like. Are you ready to rate? I am. All right. Well, on a scale of one to 10, let's see. One being very, very, very bad romance and 10 <laughs> being perfect illusion. What would you say is your rating of Lady Gaga? I would say my rating would be about an 8.2. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I feel like you give 8.5 a lot. 
I think it's funny you were like, it's not quite as good as the last 8.5 I gave, so I'm going to give it an (laughs) 8.2. But I didn't think it needed to be in the 7 scale. It just... So you really liked it. I did. I did enjoy this week, which was really shocking because of the sexuality and the similarities to Madonna, which I didn't give a high rating to Madonna. Sexuality can be fun. It is. I just thought it was really funny about this week when my da- daughter said, Mom, everyone knows who Lady Gaga is. And now you <laughs> do. Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> so if you, our audience, would like to follow along with Rachel's journey of discovering the artist who everybody else already knows who they are, <laughs> please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, rate and subscribe on iTunes, and check out all the Spotify playlists for Lady Gaga and all the previous artists by going to Spotify and following Spotify colon user colon music she missed. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much. And have a great week. (laughs) Bye. Bye.